I'm really excited to talk about the screen bar Halo. Now on this channel, I reviewed two other screen bars and they were very inexpensive and quite good, especially for the money in. The screen bar Halo is quite expensive. However, you get what you pay for. I think this is one of the best monitor light bars or probably the best monitor light bars that money can get you. And I think the, the key aspect of this, the, the reason why I think this is so good is the crazy way it bends light. So honestly, this screen bar that has zero glare, 100% no glare, and the beam of light, the way it hits your desk is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna, I wanna talk about this a lot more because I think this is one of the most premium aspects of this of the specific light bar. And it's something that you don't necessarily get in the other light bars. Now, don't get me wrong. Those light bars like the Quintus and the Xiaomi light bar are fantastic, especially for the price. However, if you want the best of the best, I definitely think BenQ is going to be one of your top options on your list because the way it bends light is absolutely amazing. So let's go on to the unboxing experience. Now, this comes in a very nice package. Everything looks nice and well packaged. A lot of film tape that you can peel off of you. It feels really good. Setting this up was a complete breeze. And this is one of the things I really like about it. The Quintus light bar was extremely kind of fiddly to set up. This, you just plop it on. It's a really good experience. Setting up, plug it into your USB. Now, one thing to do note is that it's not a detachable USB, but I think that's a good trade-off because it probably gives you a lot more kind of ease of use in, in terms of how you assemble. You don't have to assemble anything. You just put it on your monitor. And this monitor light bar supports all types of monitors. So you have curved ones, big ones. It's pretty good. Now, in terms of the, the length of it, it's a tad longer than the Xiaomi light bar. So I really like that. I Well, that's one thing that I missed about when I switched the Xiaomi light bar was that it was a little bit too small for my liking. The Quintus was large, and but this one is pretty good. The only little nitpick I have with this is that I kind of wish it came in a matte black color. Now, this gray color looks fantastic. I really like it. It's really growing on me. But, you know, black just looks nice because I have a black monitor, for example. So I covered this topic in great detail, but why would you want to spend a lot of money on a screen bar or a monitor light bar? Well, the main reason is that let's say you have a very inadequate lighting in your computing area that can really contribute to a lot of eye strain. And trust me, this is a really serious issue. Maybe you don't, you're not, maybe you're not aware of it, but eventually I'll creep up, creep up onto you. So what you want to do is you want to have a very evenly lit scene. You don't want a very stark contrast. So for example, if it's really dark behind your monitor, it's going to be hard for your eyes to like stay focused and, and kind of be feel comfortable. So you definitely want equal lighting. And that also applies to the front. And th this is something that really amazes me about monitor light bars is that it's beam angle, the way it lights up the space in front of the monitor is absolutely ingenious. And obviously it doesn't take any space on your desk. And that's so key, especially in my tiny little condo, this tiny little apartment, every square inch really, really counts. So if you want to maximize space and have a really elegant look, I think monitor light bars are the only way to go. Now I do recommend putting a light behind your monitor. And interestingly, the halo does come with a little extra backlight on the rear of it. And that's supposed to add a little bit more bias lighting. Now, for those who don't know what bias lighting, it's kind of like what I alluded to earlier. Bias lighting just kind of lets up the, the area behind your monitor so that it's more evenly lit so your eyes don't have to work as hard to stay like dilated and whatnot. Now, this is a really good addition to it. I don't think it's super necessary because I just don't think it's super strong to, to make a big difference. And especially on my monitor, the actual rear light is being blocked by the, by the monitor stand, which is really unfortunate. So if I think if I had a better monitor stand, I would maybe be able to better evaluate this kind of feature. So I think it's a really good addition, but you're really buying it for the front light and the way, the way that the front light just beams out so nicely onto your desk. I want to make one quick correction. If you're using this rear light in the nighttime, I think it makes a huge difference. So it's definitely great for those people who really like to work in the darkness, but also would rather not have to turn on all the lights. So how does BenQ reduce so much glare on the screen by using its asymmetrical optical design? Well, in order to find out, let's compare how the LED array of lights is compared to the competitors. Now, if you look underneath the BenQ and look towards the LED lights, obviously when the, the light is off, and you compare that to the, uh, the Xiaomi light bar, one thing that's really interesting how I noticed it was how they kind of built the, the LED lights. So on the Xiaomi, it's a little bit more frosted. So that means there's more dispersion of light. So that means that the light might hit the monitor just a tad, just like a little bit. Now, I never really had any real issues with glare, but I didn't notice it. With the BenQ, the way it's structured, it's a clear glass. And I don't know, they just do some voodoo magic where they bend the light and it just hits it hits my desk it hits my side wall over here perfectly and i'm just absolutely flabbergasted on how they do this the engineering the ingenuity behind it this is the main reasons why i would probably want to go with a benq and sp spend that extra 50 like 50 percent more money or whatever it's honestly all about your eyes and not having any glare on the monitor is a is a feat of engineering to be honest 
So I know I'm really dazzled by this feature. Let's talk, let's move on. Let's talk about some other things about the, uh, the actual light bar. Now, the one thing I don't, I'm not too crazy about is their implementation of the wireless remote. So you can see that this wireless remote, it looks different than the, the Xiaomi one. So with the Xiaomi light bar remote, it's really simple. All you have to do is tap it to turn it on and then rotate the dial to change the brightness and then hold down to change the temperature. Now with the BenQ remote, it's a little bit more complicated. It has this LED light that shows wh where you are in terms of the brightness, where you are in terms of temperature. It even has a favorite feature so you can dial in your favorite setting and just remember it. It just feels a lot more premium, but I much prefer the more simpler approach with Xiaomi. So the most frustrating thing with it is that to get it to turn on so that it activates, you kind of have to put your hand around it and sometimes it doesn't fully work all the time. So it's just a little bit of getting used to. It's not a big deal. I think it's a really cool, neat device and it looks amazing. It feels premium in the hands. It's very like, nice and heavy, very solid, and it's powered by two or three AAA batteries. Also, another premium experience you get with this light bar is that when you rotate it, it's really smooth. So you get that 25 degrees of rotation and it's a super smooth experience so you can fine tune it to the perfect adjustment. Now, as per usual, if you have one of these light bars plugged into your monitor, into the USB port, you get that very nice convenience of just turning off your monitor and it, it also turns off. And then when you turn back your monitor, it remembers the last setting. So that's a really nice convenient feature, but no worries if you don't have any USB ports on your monitor, you can just plug it into a regular USB port and then you get the power, but you'll just have to manually turn it off, which is not a big deal. I've been using the favorite feature to quickly recall specific settings for when I'm using the computer at night. I like to make the color temperature more warm at night in order to reduce blue light emissions, which would otherwise interfere with my sleep patterns. So it's no doubt in the end, I love this screen bar. It's absolutely amazing. Just the beam formation, the way the light hits my desk and does not hit my monitor is fantastic. So I love the design. I love the subtle like branding. It's not too flashy or anything like that. It's a fantastic device. Now, is it worth the full price? Well, that really depends. It really depends on what you're trying to get at. I think this is one of those buy it for life things that maybe you spend the upfront money, you pay the premiums, but you end up having a really good product in the end and something that you'll probably use for many, many years because I can't see this LED light going down anytime soon, right? So just to wrap up this video, I have to say definitely worth the price. It's a little bit a tad pricey. The remote isn't the most intuitive, but you do definitely do get used to it. But this is one of the best things that you can probably buy for your eyes. And if you're a heavy user in the office, you're a remote, you're a remote worker, you're constantly on the computer and maybe you're working at night, this is a worthy buy for life investment, especially if you don't have uniform lighting in your office space. So definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in description. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'm here to help and help you make the most informed decision. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.